In the mid-1800s, farmers across Europe and America stumbled upon a soil-building method so powerful that it transformed barren fields into fertile, crop-heavy land within a single season. Yields doubled, sometimes even tripled, and the results outperformed compost piles that had been tended for months. Yet despite its success, this method was eventually pushed aside, even outright banned in certain places. The reason wasn't that it didn't work, it was because it worked too well, disrupted established agricultural systems, and came with social, environmental, and sometimes political backlash. This is the story of that forgotten trick, why it once vanished, and why modern gardeners are rediscovering its potential. If you've struggled with clay soil, dead garden beds, or sluggish compost that takes too long to mature, this piece of history holds a lesson that could change the way you garden today. Stay with me, because by the end of this, you'll know how to apply the principles behind this banned method in your own backyard and why it still holds the power to outgrow compost. The soil trick revealed. Night soil and urine fertilizers. The banned soil trick of the 1800s was the widespread agricultural use of what was then called night soil, human manure, and urine-based fertilizers. For centuries, this practice was common across Asia and parts of Europe. Farmers collected waste from cities and rural households, treated or aged it, and applied it back to fields. The nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in these materials created an immediate fertility boost that compost alone often could not match. By the 19th century, with urban populations booming and industrial farming expanding, the use of night soil was scaled up massively. It was cheap renewable, and powerful. Farmers reported crops that outperformed those grown on manure-treated or compost-fed soils. In fact, the fertility of certain regions in China and Japan for thousands of years was attributed to this closed-loop system of recycling human waste into soil. But in Europe and America, despite impressive results, the practice drew fierce criticism. The opposition had little to do with productivity and everything to do with perception and public health. As cities grew denser, human waste disposal became more complicated. Without careful treatment, pathogens spread through improperly handled night soil, leading to outbreaks of cholera, typhoid, and other diseases. By the late 1800s, governments across Europe and North America began outlawing the practice in favor of sewage disposal systems and chemical fertilizers that were becoming widely available. Chemical fertilizer companies, rising in influence and profit, pushed hard against traditional waste-based farming. The discovery of Chilean nitrate deposits and later the development of synthetic nitrogen through the Haber-Bosch process made human and animal waste seem backward. What had once been the cornerstone of soil fertility was now branded unsanitary, dangerous, and old-fashioned. By the early 20th century, night soil had all but disappeared from Western farming. Despite its downfall, there's no denying the effectiveness of this banned trick. When handled properly, the nutrient density of night soil far exceeded that of traditional compost. Urine alone contains nitrogen levels comparable to commercial fertilizers, along with phosphorus and potassium in soluble forms that plants can absorb almost immediately. Compost, on the other hand, is slower to release nutrients and often requires larger quantities to achieve the same fertility boost. Compost is excellent for building soil structure and feeding microbes, but when it comes to delivering an immediate shot of nitrogen and phosphorus, the old methods of waste recycling had few rivals. Farmers in the 1800s weren't exaggerating when they said it outgrew compost. They saw results that could mean the difference between hunger and plenty. Today, gardeners and soil scientists are, you know, re-examining these banned practices through a modern lens. While raw night soil is unsafe and remains rightly discouraged, the principles behind it still hold value. Urine, for instance, is sterile when fresh and can be safely diluted and applied as a nitrogen fertilizer. A common ratio is one part urine to ten parts water used to feed heavy feeders like corn, brassicas, 
or fruiting vegetables. This simple practice, sometimes called liquid gold, is making a comeback among organic growers who value sustainability and low-cost inputs. Humanure composting is another approach gaining traction. By carefully composting human waste for at least a year under controlled conditions that maintain high temperatures, pathogens are destroyed, leaving behind a nutrient-rich humus that rivals the best animal manures. Systems like the composting toilet or humanure bin are being studied and applied in off-grid communities, eco-villages, and regenerative farming projects worldwide. The biggest lesson the 19th century soil trick offers is the value of nutrient cycling. In nature, nothing is wasted. What falls to the ground feeds the soil, which in turn feeds new growth. Human systems, especially in modern agriculture, broke this cycle by flushing away nutrients and replacing them with mined or manufactured inputs. This led to both soil depletion and dependency on external resources. By recycling organic matter including urine and where safe treated humanure back into the soil, gardeners can close the loop. This reduces reliance on costly fertilizers, keeps nutrients on site, and creates a more resilient growing system. It's the same principle that kept Asian soils fertile for thousands of years, while Western fields reliant on guano imports and chemical fertilizers often experience those boom and bust cycles. For serious gardeners, the question becomes how can we apply the spirit of this banned trick without, you know, the risks? The answer really lies in balance and modern adaptation. Urine, when it's safely diluted, is actually a powerful and pretty underutilized fertilizer that can work well alongside compost. By combining it with carbon-rich materials, like straw or wood chips, you prevent nutrient leaching and keep those nitrogen levels balanced. Cover cropping and deep mulching also help retain and cycle these important nutrients. Compost is still essential for building soil structure and supporting microbial health, but, honestly, by supplementing with liquid fertilizers inspired by ancient practices, gardeners can get faster growth and healthier plants. As modern gardeners face rising costs of fertilizers, degraded soils, and the challenges of climate change, revisiting the lessons of the past is not just curiosity, it's necessity. The banned soil trick of the 1800s reminds us that fertility doesn't come from a bag. It comes from cycles of life, from understanding how to work with nature's processes rather than against them. For the Amish, for traditional Asian farmers, and for countless generations before the industrial era, nothing was wasted. Everything returned to the soil. That's why their fields remained fertile for centuries without chemical input. If we want our gardens to thrive in the same way, we have to rediscover the principles they lived by, even if we adapt them for safety and practicality today. The story of this banned soil trick from the 1800s is not just about human waste. It's about a philosophy of soil care that valued recycling, balance, and resilience. It shows us that compost alone, while powerful, isn't the only path to fertile soil. When we integrate faster nutrient inputs with slow-building organic matter, we create a system that both feeds our plants today and sustains our soil for tomorrow. For gardeners who want to push their soil beyond the limits of compost, the old ways still have lessons worth learning. They remind us that fertility lies not in products, but in processes, and that by closing the loop, we can outgrow even the richest compost pile. If you found this exploration of forgotten soil wisdom useful, make sure to subscribe to Hydrohaven. Share this with fellow gardeners who care about true soil health and let's keep bringing these timeless practices back into the light. The soil is alive and with the right care it will feed us for generations to come.